administration of Project Libre. My name is Mark O'Brien, along with Laurent Cretchenot. We are the co-founders of Project Libre, which is an open source project management solution that's an alternative to Microsoft Project, Primavera, and others. It has been downloaded over 4 million times in 200 plus countries and has been translated into 21 languages. It is available on Linux, Mac, and Windows, and you again can open existing Microsoft Project files. Um, and you could do so here. What I'm going to do is create a project. I'm going to call it a sample project. And I'll give it a project manager's name, Mindy Drake. And again, I can give it a start date. However, if you deselect forward schedule, you see that changes to finish date. So for instance, if I had to finish by the 4th of July, I could put that date in and it would backward schedule and tell me when I need to start that project. I can give it a, a note. So once I do that, you can see that it, it comes up with a, um, a ribbon bar up here. Under file, I can obviously open, put a new file, print preview projects. There's project information out there. Uh, if I click on that, you can give everything from a priority to the project type. Uh, the base calendar you're going to use on it, the, uh, the status, the current date, etc. And you can see there are statistics for the project as well. I'll close in on that. Calendars, you can give them calendars, 24-hour um, shift, night shift, specific calendars. If I don't want working time, I could highlight Mondays, and no one likes to work Mondays anyway, and we could highlight on that. And so you can apply the calendars to projects, tasks, resources, etc., and there are baselines. If I click on the task menu, you can see the different screens you can have as well. There's a Gantt chart, there's a PERT chart, network diagram, a WBS work breakdown structure. I will show all of those here. You can zoom in and out, cut, copy, and paste. Indent, outdent to create uh, summary structures. You can obviously link. There's information assigning resources. With the resources, you can set up a resource pool and you can also have a hierarchy. So you can have a resource breakdown structure. And again, that rolls up availability as well as costs as you go through there. And again, it's, it's very similar. <clears throat> and on the views, you can have a projects view uh, and you can have actually sub, sub screens where you can have a histogram, um, earn value charting, etc. cetera, in the, in the sub. So what I'm gonna do here on the Gantt chart, you can see that there's a spreadsheet on the side. I can resize the windows and I can also resize the columns. If I put the cursor in the top corner, I can also right click and there's a whole set of preset uh, columns that I can use. What I'm going to do is just put some tasks in here really quickly. I'll put a summary task. I'll say it's a design task, maybe a development task. I can test it. And then we'll do a milestone for product rollout. Now, when I do that, you can see the durations come in with a question mark next to it. That is uh, an estimated or a tentative duration. If I actually put a duration in, 10 days, you can see that as I cursor down 10 days, uh, that goes away. And then I can say uh, testing, let's make that just a five day and we'll make product rollout a zero day milestone. Now that I've got the tasks in there, I can highlight these. And if I click on task, I can then indent these. And what we've done with this is we've now created a summary task and that summary task can be collapsed. So you only see, so if you got different segments of your project, it's a, it's a good way to go through and do that. And then if I want to, link, one of the things I can do is I can link these in serial. So I can highlight a whole series of them and you can see they come in in serial. So it's a nice tool to use. I can also click on that link and change it. So these are all finished to start. So the subsequent task will start when the previous one finishes. However, you can model it with finish to finish, start finish, or start start. You have a lag there. So something starts two days after the previous one finishes. I'm going to remove this link. And you can see it goes back to the start. I can also put the cursor in a bar and drag to the other bar and create that link. And I can do it this way as well. And you can see there's a difference in coloring here now that I've got two tasks in parallel. 
Project Libre creates a critical path methodology where you can actually see which, which tasks are on the critical path and which have float to them, and you can go through and, and do that. Uh, so I've got the durations, I've got the linkages. I could come through and save a baseline, for instance, with this. And you can save an unlimited number of baselines, essentially, for the entire project, or if you want to select tasks to baseline. And you can see the baseline bar shows up down below. If I click on one of the tasks, I get the task detail dialog box. And it shows the duration, the percent complete you could enter here, or the priority defaults to 500. We could go back to estimated. And if I do so, you'll see, you'll see the question mark. Uh, pops up again, and the costing on it, etc. You can also see what the predecessors are, the successors in this case, and we can modify these. Uh, we will add resources later, and then on an advanced standpoint, you can do constraints. So the default is to start as soon as possible. However, uh, for costing purposes, and particularly on non-critical tasks, you may want it to start as late as possible, uh, or finish no earlier than, finish no later than. It could be an effort-driven task or it can be a time-driven task. And we also do earn value costing, which we won't go over today. It's more advanced features, but you can do that as well. And of course, notes. If I click over on resources, we can go over to the resource pool. And again, I can say summary and I can say Mark, Connor, Kylie, put Mindy in there as well. And again, they can be work types or material resources. We can put the emails in there. We can also put uh, hourly rates in here. So I could say $100 an hour, 110. I can go $110 an hour. I could say 120. Oop, I keep clicking the, the wrong. And then I can go 130. I can also do overtime rates. So again, based on our calendar, if it's an eight hour calendar and we end up working uh, 12 hours, there could be an overtime rate on that. We can do a cost per use, particularly for material resources. This is very good. So if you're gonna put a resource to work, there's a cost per use of that. And again, we can actually have the earned value costing prorated or linearly across the task or we can actually accrue that at the end or start of a, uh, of a task. Uh, gives initials there. I can also come through and uh, similar to the WBS, uh, we can actually set up a, uh, a resource structure here. And again, I can say Connor and Kylie report to Mark. And now if I take a look at the, the RBS, the resource breakdown structure, you can see that's there. And once we assign the, the resources to tasks and start accruing costs, you can see the budget and the cost will roll up to the summary. So we can go through and do that. I'm going to go back to the Gantt chart. And we're going to assign those resources. So I can, I could click on a couple of uh, tasks here and I can assign Connor and Kylie to, to both of those. And if I move this over, you can see that their names pop up there. On test, put Mindy on test, and, and we'll, we'll leave it at that. So you can see the resources are now assigned. I can actually progress these with putting the cursor in front. You can do it in the dialog box as well, but if I put the cursor over, I can come through and I can update the percent complete. I can also change the duration. You can split tasks too. But if this design task is going to take longer than expected, you can see the deviation that causes on the project and with the baseline. One of the things I can do is I can actually save multiple baselines. If this is the new reality, we can actually re-baseline it. You can keep the old baseline, but this one I'm gonna say is baseline one and for the entire project, and you'll see the magenta line comes in and that's our new baseline. If we want to actually view it, we can actually change that as well. So there's a lot showing bar styles, for instance. 
I can say I no longer want to see uh, the initial baseline. And again, all I now see is the magenta line. And of course, I can do that the other way as well. I'll show that. And I won't show baseline one, just for clarity's sake. So you can see that. So we've now assigned the baselines. Um, again, with, with non-critical tasks, there's float on it. I could have moved that and it wouldn't, uh, in fact, uh, change the, uh, uh, the project end date. I'm going to click over to the network diagram now just to quickly show you what this is. Again, you can uh, link your tasks to, through this. You can make any modifications to it, but that is our network diagram. <clears throat> the work breakdown structure. Again, you can see that uh, we've got a cost roll up here um, throughout. So that's uh, that's good as well. I'm nearing the end here because I don't want to take too much of your time, but I wanted to show you the basics of this. We also have these screens here. If you're working on multiple projects, you can you can scroll between the projects. We can also have a resource histogram shown at the bottom, and you can see what, uh, or you can go even individually by different uh, resources. And if we want to take a look at Kylie, for instance, on these. So you can go through and do that as far as the resource usage. And the, the, the really, the, the last item I'll go through is resource usage, where you can actually take a look. It's almost like a time card. So you can see what Connor is assigned to design and development, and you could put hours in there. You've got the ability, if you cursor in here and you right click on the corner I can also put actual work in here as a column or as a row if I want to put uh, budgeted cost of work performed for instance and all of these items so it does get very uh, you know detailed and it's a high level project management software but this gives you an overview and I hope that was useful for you again it's available on Linux, Mac, and Windows. You can download it. Uh, you can go to the website, www.projectlibre.com or .org, and you can become a member of the community. And you can also download it um, from that site with links. And we look forward to hearing from you. We like to do that. Thank you.